Back in the old days, revolvers used to be the king of self-defense sidearms. It's partly thanks to the fact that you either carry a revolver or a rifle or both with you. I'm talking about, of course, the time when horse-drawn carriages were still mainstream. But that was a long time ago, and revolvers enjoyed their popularity for quite some time. It's partly thanks to the fact that people really had no other alternatives that revolvers became so successful. But things change as technology progresses. About three decades ago, the American gun-buying public started to shift to semi-auto pistols. For all intents and purposes, semi-autos offered something that a revolver cannot. You get more shots to work with before you have to reload, and the reload process itself is short. No longer are you limited to six or so shots in the cylinder. You get at least ten. You do not have to get a moon clip or even worse, reload every cartridge into the chamber individually. You just push the mag release button and slap in a fresh one. On top of all this, when police officers started to switch to semi-auto pistols, the public took notice. This was a signal for them to start reconsidering their choice for sidearms, and they opted for semi-autos as well. After all, if they were good enough for police officers, they would be good enough for the general public. They were no longer limited to revolvers anymore. They had options, and they picked semi-autos instead. Nowadays, it's almost like semi-autos completely dominate the everyday carry self-defense sidearm market. There are a ton of them out there in different shapes, sizes, and features. That you're spoiled for choices. So how have the old revolvers been keeping up in comparison? To an average Joe, when they see a revolver, they tend to think of an old Wild West in time before Wi-Fi and Starbucks. Does that mean revolvers are obsolete? Absolutely not. In fact, they're still going strong to this very day. Why is that? As it turns out, while semi-auto scratched the itch that revolvers could not, the opposite is also true. You can say that they're like yin and yang. They complement each other, making up for each other's weaknesses. For this reason, there's still a sizable market for revolvers. And this is what this video is all about. I'll tell you a few compelling reasons why you should reconsider your choice for sidearms. Simplicity. A semi-auto has a lot of moving parts and you need a bit of practice to understand all of them. But once you do, it gets easier. Loading, unloading, and reloading your magazine in a semi-auto is straightforward. Racking the slide is a simple matter. Disassembling and reassembling it might be a bit tricky depending on the model, and you need to learn how to do that so you can clean its innards. Some semi-autos come with neat safeties in various places. All these moving parts can be exciting to gun people, but not so much for newbies. A revolver is much more straightforward. There are only a few moving parts, the trigger, the hammer, and the cylinder. Just flip the cylinder out sideways, insert the cartridges with the bullets facing forward, and flip the cylinder back in. Then aim and pull the trigger. If the trigger pull feels too long, pull the hammer back first. When you're empty, swing out the cylinder again, remove the spent cartridges, and insert new ones. When it's time to clean your revolver, just run something through the cylinder chambers or the holes, as well as the barrel, and you're good to go. No disassemblies needed. Is reloading a revolver slower than shoving a magazine into a semi-auto? Definitely. Also, a revolver has far fewer rounds to work with before you have to reload. However, you should not get into a situation where you have to reload in the middle of a gunfight if you are carrying a revolver. But other than that, you do not have to worry about racking the slide, disassembly, etc. Revolvers are the most user-friendly firearm you can get. If you do not want to put in the time to learn the intricacies of a semi-auto pistol, pick up the revolver. It won't fail you. Reliability. If you are an engineer, you would know that moving parts in any given system are also points of failure. If you count the moving parts of a semi-auto and compare it to that of a revolver, you will find that the latter has far fewer. This means a revolver is far more reliable than a semi-auto. In fact, a magazine is the most likely part of a semi-auto to fail, whereas a revolver has none. To be fair, both semi-autos and revolvers can fail without proper care, maintenance, and ammo choice. Both can jam, or the round might fail. You need to work to clear the jam or eject the dud round before you can fire again. It takes a few seconds with practice, but you might not be able to afford those precious seconds. A revolver can suffer from a similar issue. If your revolver goes click, don't panic. Just pull the trigger again and it will go bang. Revolvers are also much more resistant to neglect than a semi-auto because there are so few moving parts that can jam or fail. Another thing worth pointing out is that most semi-autos will not fire when the slide is pushed out of battery. This can happen when you're in a tussle with someone and you shove the barrel into someone's chest or stomach. Their body might push the slide and render the gun non-functional. 
Granted, this does not happen very often. It's a matter of luck, but you do not want to rely on luck in a life or death situation, do you? A revolver does not have that problem. You can push it into your assailant, pull the trigger, and it would still go bang. Granted, they can try to mess with the cylinder to prevent you from firing, but it's much harder to accomplish than a revolver. Stopping power. Before we continue, I want to preface this by saying that yes, bullet placement is more important than stopping power. It does not matter if you're shooting 9mm or 357 Magnum. Both can stop an attacker if you can put one between the eyes. That argument has merit, but how confident are you? Are you confident that you can aim for the head and hit it accurately when someone is charging you and you only have a few seconds to react? Of course, this argument is not in favor of a revolver either way. The long trigger pull of a double action revolver will negatively affect accuracy. A semi-auto's trigger is light and snappy. So you will still stand a better chance of shooting accurately with a semi-auto. But it's always better to shoot an attacker with a bigger bullet so you do more damage. To be fair, no one likes to be shot, regardless of the caliber size. Taking a 9mm to the shin is probably less painful than a 357 Magnum, but both are an unpleasant experience. So the sight of you whipping out your gun to defend yourself is enough to get you out of most situations without having to pull the trigger. However, against a determined aggressor, you might need to remind them that taking one in the knee still hurts. In this case, a 357 can do the job. One reason why 9mm semi-auto pistols came with so many rounds in the magazine comes down to the fact that you're gonna need more than one shot. Nine times out of ten, you're better off shooting at center mass, the chest, rather than trying to go for the forehead. To drop someone, you might need to put down a few rounds with a semi-auto. For a revolver, you only need one or two at most. A larger bullet means a bigger hole, which equates to more damage. Add to this to more energy per round, which again means more damage. For the cost of the inconvenience of shooting the bigger rounds, revolvers can feed more than one kind of ammo. A 357 Magnum revolver will luckily eat also 38 Special and 38 Special Plus P, which not only cost less, but also are not that strong on your wrist. Similarly, for the 44 Magnum, there's the 44 Special round. However, here you might just make it easier for your wrist, but not your wallet, as 44 Special rounds are not that available anymore and therefore come with a higher price tag. This kind of compatibility gives you also an added advantage in finding any ammo at all in case of a shortage. Furthermore, this gives you the chance to start your experience easy with a low-powered round and work your way up to the real man-stoppers using the same gun. A 45 semi-auto pistol can be very small, and you can even carry some in your pocket. You might assume that a 357 Magnum is going to be large and bulky. Well, that used to be the case. Nowadays, there are many compact snub-nosed revolvers out there. They are not as small as a subcompact semi-auto, but they are convenient enough to carry around. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.